now with straight facts. Uh -huh. I don't lie in my raps. Uh -huh. Hunter Biden smoke. Uh -huh. The Democrats know that. Uh -huh. Biden ain't win Jack. Uh -huh. The name is Barack. Uh -huh. He a little B like the pack. Uh -huh. The earth might be flat. Uh -huh. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Andrew Says. I have two wonderful, wonderful pretending to be not Canadian guys on here for you guys. Um, both from Michigan, John Doyle, Red Eagle Politics. How are you guys? Doing, Doing good. great. I saw you guys were at a hockey game. This does not help the idea that you're not actually Canadians. Did you guys have a good time? We yeah, did. yeah, we had a good time. Rep I had a, had a good little time. bit better of a time yeah. than uh, Gabe and myself, but yeah, it was a good time. One of the last few, tr like, white contact sports i mean everything else has been so pacified but uh you do find a little bit of uh reservation left in hockey reservation no pun intended on lacrosse a lot of lacrosse up here in canada um around the great lakes area i wanted to have you guys on to talk about this rift between trump supporters and desantis supporters now i would have normally never felt the need to do this except that I think there's two problems mainly. One, I think this is selfish of DeSantis to run for office for president, throwing it right out there right away. And two, the online push for DeSantis supporters, I, I kind of liken it to, you know, how quickly people are on Elon Musk's side. Now, this is not about Elon Musk, but I liken it to this obvious push where it's like, we're going to support anything this guy does, no matter how cringe it is, no matter how... Uh, much it attacks Trump people. What was the first kind of sign that you guys saw that the DeSantis camp, let's say, was going to start going after Trump supporters? Was it months ago? Was it always in the weeds? Uh, John, why don't you go first? I think Rep and I were actually uh, pioneers in the sort of anti-DeSantis rhetoric, and we did <laughs> have to be very calculated with it, you know, had to kind of slowly... Uh, reveal our true thoughts on it because people were very pro DeSantis for the last two years, even in the Trump camp. But what it was, was kind of looking at the way in maybe the fallout of the whole COVID thing. You had all of these formerly never Trump publications, all these neocon publications, and they started hyping up DeSantis. And, and you would start to read the articles that they were writing about this guy because they would be like, DeSantis takes on big tech epically. And you're like, <laughs> let's flip and go. And then you read the article. And he like passes a bill that legally defines what a social media company is. And it's like, well, OK, well, that's not really what I thought it was going to be. And so you see like all of this go on or even uh, you see like clips of him, you know, going back and forth with a reporter. And you see all these like neocon influencers, all of these grifters. And they're like making edits of these clips, making him out to be like this huge larger than life figure dunking on reporters. And, you know, it's entertaining enough. But you kind of wonder like what the motive is behind that. And it became very clear that. As he continued to surround himself with that class of people, the neocons, the never Trumpers, the donors who wanted people like Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, et cetera, it became very clear what the writing on the wall uh, was, which is that they were going to try to use DeSantis as a way to artificially stop the Trump revolution. Uh, and it was a revolution. I mean, Trump has had virtually the same opinions on things for his entire public life. Uh, he used to pay to have advertisements taken out in the New York Times and New York Post just to have his opinion front and center. So he's been very consistent with what he believes, and people like love him for that. Um, where somebody like DeSantis has kind of more or less followed where he senses the party trends going. I mean, you know, when he was in Congress before Trump even got to D.C., he was not leading some America first nationalist revolution. Then in 2018, when he's running for governor of Florida, he releases a commercial where he's, his whole shtick was, look how much I love Donald Trump. And now he's going to try to take that away from Trump. And look, DeSantis is a young guy. If he wanted to carry the torch, all he would have had to do is wait another four years. He endorses Trump. Trump would have campaigned for him. He would have probably won the presidency. Who knows? But the fact that he is trying to take the torch away from Trump, who made all of these talking points that are now being discussed, talking points in the first place. Nobody was talking about these issues until Donald Trump. So the fact that he would try to take that torch away from Trump makes you wonder exactly what his motives are for doing so. And especially when you see the type of people that he's surrounding himself with, it becomes very clear that they are trying to return to the pre-Trump GOP paradigm of America last, open borders, wars for gay interests, and that's just not what the American people want. So we have to stand against DeSantis. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy, doesn't mean he's necessarily acting maliciously, but he is being used by people who are. And the fact that he can't see that, 
either means a he's in on it or b he has like comically poor political instincts in either case he should not occupy the oval office always be on the lookout for the the gay wars uh <laughs> rep uh what do you think about the stance of basically like like what john's saying there with the these talking points and the overton window being shifted towards something and him uh taking advantage towards that do you think that that's real as john would say i mean he's definitely somebody that is doing nothing other than grifting at this point and it's very evident that he sees himself oh he won a low turnout election by a lot against somebody who didn't really run a competent campaign or a campaign at all. Hold He's on a very... second. Your audio is sounding robotic. Wait, really? That's just how yeah. rep sounds. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not Ron DeSantis over here, so it, it, is, is it better now? No, it sounds like uh, maybe something needs to be plugged in and plugged out or something. Okay. Um, yeah, there you go. Better? Yeah, 100% better. Okay, go okay. ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. But no, this is somebody, and I, I kind of missed the, the question that you uh, said there with all the audio difficulties, but um, what it comes down to is the fact that you have all the worst people in the Republican Party, whether if it is the donor class, the never Trumpers from 2016, even if they eventually came on board with Trump, they're trying to get rid of him. And they're trying to use this guy who they hype up, who has like good a good PR team, uh, as John mentioned, conservative media, the establishment conservative media loves him. But they're trying to prop this guy up and bait him into taking uh, this opportunity, which he's going to lose, by the way. And try to go out there and divide the party and subvert Trump and take the torch away from Donald Trump. And it's not going to work. And he's somebody who was in good favor with a lot of the Republican primary voters, Trump supporters, you name it. And he has thrown all of that away to take the neocon bait, hundreds of millions of dollars that are just going to be going down the drain that could probably be used for uh, Donald Trump to defeat Biden in November. But instead, he's taking the bait from these people. And as a result, I don't believe he's going to win. And every step of the way, he's, you know, laid down his campaign. He's down by 35 points and he's acting like somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. The Twitter space announcement was a disaster. His lead surrogates are wasting their time attacking anonymous accounts on Twitter, 16-year-olds on Twitter that may be like replying a, a one-liner at them or something like that. So either way... It's not going to work. And this is just the beginning of the end for Ron DeSantis. His best case scenario for his career, or the rest of his career, is he's going to be viewed as somebody like Ted Cruz, and he's never going to be able to achieve the mantle. And that really speaks volumes. And that doesn't even talk about his lack of charisma or all of the other negative attributes policy-wise or how he, you know, govern nationally in Congress, et cetera. So that's kind of my take on the whole thing. Yeah, John, what happened with that? kid i guess i'm learning that he's 16 i saw that off of your twitter account did the desantis people respond to a 16 year old was that the gop josh kid yeah sorry can you put some fucking respect on his name please that kid. you're talking about <laughs> i don't know who he josh. is <laughs> yeah okay give you me know, the I, history the learned i history tweeted this out josh. the only litmus test going forward is where were you when gop josh was attacked where were you andrew i was right on the front lines where I were you read it I was up in. Oh, I was Canada up over there, guy. Oh, I really didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Once you say again. It, was, it was some. You, you, there was a 9 11 reference in there. Somewhere. That, yeah, no, that's like Zoomer 9 11 is when <laughs> okay. uh, Christina Pashaw went after GOP Josh. Um, you know, he's. So I was put on to that kid uh, maybe a few months ago. I think someone, we had a mutual friend or something. He reached out to me and asked, if I wanted to do uh, come on a show and do an interview. So I said, absolutely, because if you're at all familiar with my work, I have such a spot in my heart for like husky teenagers. Espe like you just like look at these kids and, and they're just like their eyes are still full of life and, and they don't quite understand how bad things are yet. So they tend to have a very sort of like um, like like boyish optimism in terms of how they regard politics. And so you even look at his name, GOP Josh. <laughs> Like, this is a guy who's like, oh, I'm a Republican. I like the GOP. And it's not like cringe because we've all been there. This, not, it's not like a libertarian phase where it's cringe because it's like, oh, uh, like the beliefs in themselves are cringe. It's like just this more 
I guess it's indicative of like this sort of like youthful state. I don't know what it is, but I love GOP Josh. He's America's sweetheart. So I go on this show with him. We have a great conversation and uh, he's a Trump guy. And so he started going back and forth with these DeSantis people. And, and like Rep mentioned, you've got this campaign and they have their sort of like bulldogs, their piranhas going after and picking fights with like the MAGA influencers, with GOP Josh of all people. And it's just completely unserious. And this is the problem. I mean, Trump has obviously had a lot of issues with personnel. Uh, I think those have largely been corrected. But the people who gravitate towards DeSantis are like fundamentally like we'll say feminine people. I mean, you can like look at the way his comms apparatus operates and your first instinct would be like, wait a minute, I think this is being governed by like women and homosexuals. And then you look at actually who is running it. And it's true. Like, that's what it is. It's this very like catty sort of just like, it's like, can you stop? And so I'm kind of glad that you've got this like class of MAGA influencers on Twitter who are like keeping them at bay because there is like very serious work that Trump is doing behind the scenes. Uh, I mean, his like articulation of his policies is the best policy platform we've ever seen from any candidate, like period. Um, and so, you know, DeSantis thinks that's like unserious. He thinks he won't have to address it. That's not true. And so this is going to be the problem. Like DeSantis has a huge war chest he's working with, but as the public sees more of DeSantis, they are off put by him. Whereas the opposite is the case with Trump. As the public sees more of Trump, they love him, which is why we don't need these like Christopher Nolan-esque commercials edited. We don't need <laughs> these like epic pieces by articles. You had a guy on Twitter, my all-time favorite Twitter account. You know, I almost retired from politics last week. He followed me. Comrade Stump, my all-time favorite Twitter account. I've been following this guy for seven years. And he made the, like, can't stump the Trump videos back in 2016. And it was the original, like, Trump just is himself. And then there's, like, the dubstep. There's the memes. You can't do that with DeSantis. Like, the more people see of him, the more they're like, uh, this guy just doesn't have it. Whereas Trump, all you have to do is put Donald Trump in front of a rally with tens of thousands of people who have traveled from all over, waiting outside in the cold. And he goes up there with a 3 by 5 note card, and he just talks. And people love it. And you can't teach that. And so I feel bad for DeSantis. It really is like a, Mac, a, Macbeth, a Macbeth story. We've got this guy, pretty good politician. And then you've got all these women, his wife in particular, whispering into his ear, telling him that he can go with the king, go with the king. And now his career is going to be over. It's Jover for DeSantis because he, he couldn't use uh, the more rational faculties of his brain. Who are some DeSantis influencers? Would I have heard of any of them? Uh, yeah, you got uh, <sighs> Christina Pushaw, as we all know, the What's woman made out of plastic. Um, we've got there's so many of them too. There's Dave that Rubin, John Cardio right. guy, right? Uh, ben Shapiro even engages in a lot of disemperi on his downtime. I've noticed. <laughs> uh, uh, you have like that one, that one Max guy from Twitter, and there's a lot of these like anonymous accounts, and they all came out of nowhere, and they all started like either like around the midterms or after the midterms, and now they've been propped up by his like comms team to essentially be DeSantis's attack dogs and as as John mentioned like they are they're very feminine in their behavior they are very catty and it kind of is a callback to like the cruise crew in 2016 or like a lot of these influencers that we saw in like the never trump camp and all of their attack lines like trying to attack him from the right and then trying to attack him from the left it just doesn't work they don't know exactly how to navigate trump because trump is like this x factor and he is a unique candidate that is capable of building that coalition to the point where they don't know what to do and they haven't learned from history at all and they think the answer to that is somebody like ron DeSantis. and john mentioned this perfectly like he's not a meme you need the meme factor in this day and age especially in the digital age even you want to talk about people without a whole lot of charisma say what you will about the current occupant of of 1600 pennsylvania avenue right now but you know even he's a walking meme every time he opens up his mouth people laugh whether they're laughing at him or laughing with him you look at jeb bush even he had the please clap thing and like there was a little bit of of charm there even though he kind of just like it was anti-charisma like he's more like mitt romney with a software update like he'll talk about woke he'll talk about uh, some other stuff. He'll ship illegal aliens further into the country to own the libs. But other than that, policy-wise, you look at him at the national level when he was in Congress, it was basically not a lot, you know, there wasn't a lot of difference between him and somebody like 
uh, Paul Ryan when it came down to many of those key votes. He was not this America first fighter. He was like in the Tea Party Freedom Caucus, but he wasn't even like a solid member of that group. And he's always just been somebody his entire career who tries to office climb. We saw this back in 2016. Rubio was going for the presidency. DeSantis ran for the Senate seat and then dropped out. In 2018, he ran for the governorship there. And then he won thanks to Donald Trump saving his primary and general election bids. And now he's got access to all this PR. He's in Florida. Like he reads something off a note card in front of a reporter. They prop it up. They put it everywhere. And because you have a competent statewide party in Florida, he was able to have, I guess you would say, a not as disappointing midterm result compared to a lot of other Republicans who were not incumbents. And as a result, they're trying to manufacture that hype and have him ride the wave to victory. But I mean, we saw Mitt Romney win big in Massachusetts, John McCain won big in Arizona. It doesn't always translate. And if you're talking about electability, and this is the last thing I'll say for now, because this is like their strongest argument, Trump can't win. First of all, DeSantis doesn't even have charisma. He can't even win, you know, 25% of the primary vote as of right now. And you look at him on issues like trade, social security, uh, the main issues that Donald Trump kind of like bucked the GOP orthodoxy on to flip states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, DeSantis doesn't have any of that. And as a result, he's going to seem out of touch. And after a divisive primary with Trump, you think he stands a chance in the states he needs to win the election? Absolutely not. So honestly, just one look at it. It's like there's no reason for anybody to be supporting this guy. They need to rally behind the nominee. Donald Trump and help him defeat <laughs> Biden in 2024. Didn't what was the differentiation between him beating was it Andrew Gillum in the original election? It was yeah. like less than a couple of percent, right? And that yeah. guy, I wish I had them on hand. The pictures, there's pictures of that guy literally passed out <laughs> from yeah. drugs on a mattress. And the cops were, I assume it was cops or the inv crime scene investigators, taking photographs of him laying next to a pile of vomit. Conjecture, not provable in court, Your Honor. But I believe that's the, the photos I saw of him. Am, am I mistaken on that one? I'm pretty sure that's him. Yeah, he was a bisexual yeah. meth head. And that was found out a year and a half after he barely lost to Ron DeSantis. And this is a guy running like a social, like he's, he kind of like aligned himself with like the Democrat socialists or whatever in Florida of all places. And DeSantis could only beat him by like, what, 40,000 votes or so. Like it kind of showcased how incompetent he runs his campaigns from the onset. And he didn't really have to do much in 2022. And one could argue the fact that they kind of just let him coast to victory in Florida and didn't really try against him because of the fact that they know that he'll be propped up as this person who could go out there and defeat Donald Trump in a primary and Trumpism once and for all, restore the uniparty, even if he might, you know, read something a little bit more based off of a note card than your traditional Republican politician. But as of right now, that's not happening. It's, it's just a disaster in real time. And that Twitter space kind of showcased uh, it symbolically. Yeah, I uh, I have like a visceral contempt for the talking point that DeSantis is outflanking Trump from the right. Like, it's just a fundamental misunderstanding of how politics and our politics functions. Like, this idea that DeSantis is outflanking Trump because he'll talk about Bud Light. He'll talk about Disney. And Trump is silent <laughs> on those issues. And it's like, dude, if we're in like Trump camp, I will talk about the culture war. I will talk about the woke stuff because it sort of presupposes that what Trump represents is settled science and we can kind of embark from there. But if you're going to go at the king and say, actually, Trumpism isn't settled science. We have to redo the whole thing. We have to take it back to formula. Now, all of a sudden, the culture war stuff doesn't actually matter as much. And I'll tell you why. They want to have the conversation about the culture without talking about immigration. The reason woke exists is because that is a desperate American spirit seeking a sense of identity, or I should say maybe Western spirit in general. We're not allowed to have a national identity. We're not allowed to have a cultural or religious identity. The only identities that you're allowed to have in this country are supporting black people, supporting sexual deviants, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're going to go at Bud Light, if you're going to go at Disney, 
you better have the faucet turned off, which is the literally tens of millions of people who are not Western, who are incompatible with Western civilization, obviously, I mean, look at the countries of origin, flooding into this country. And Donald Trump's election was not about, you know, uh, how do I say this in a nice way? It was about identity, above all things. It wasn't about like the economic arguments for stopping illegal immigration. It was about a wall. We don't want these people here. Not because they're bad people, not because we even, well, no, that second part, we probably do think their cultures are inferior, but it's about sovereignty. It's about America staying America, and it's about recognizing that America is not an accident. It's not just like we all got together and like, whoa, look at this thing that happened. It happened because Americans built it for Americans, and not everybody in the world gets to be an American. And more importantly, not anybody in the world can just be an American by subscribing to this like vague idea of American values or something. We've tried that didn't work. And so that's what got Trump into office. And so we can have the woke conversation. We can have the culture war conversation. But this idea that you're going to outflank Trump from the right by being like, I'll talk about Bud Light. I'll talk about Disney. But you're perfectly fine with these millions of people coming here legally. You have no position articulated on stopping legal immigration. Like, say what you will about Trump. He halved legal immigration during his first administration. So it's just a completely ridiculous thing that they're saying. And also, the electability thing, another fundamental misunderstanding of how our politics works. The reason independents exist as a voter demographic isn't because the parties are just so different and polarized that the average American just doesn't know where to look. It's actually that they're so similar that the average American's like, it doesn't even matter at this point. It's all a circus. Because on the issues that really matter, the things that Trump realigned, the trade, the immigration, the foreign policy, both parties have given people the same for the last 40 years. Trump managed to single-handedly break through that consensus and realign the parties to actually reflect the interests of its people. That's why they've declared war on Trump. Yeah, they'll call George Bush Hitler. Yeah, they'll call Trump Hitler. But who actually gets like prosecuted by the feds? Who gets their private estates raided by the feds? Trump, because he has actually gone against the grain and the way DeSantis cuts against the grain. You had significant <laughs> congressional majorities, Mike. Like, no, you did not, okay? You're totally propped up. It's totally fake. So the, the way that public backlash can best be, our, or best be understood is anyone who is a threat to the establishment, whatever that may be in this country, is going to have baggage because baggage is defined by what the public perceives you to have. Nobody actually cares that Trump, a billionaire Manhattan real estate mogul, maybe got a little creative with his taxes here and there, maybe got a little creative. No one cares. But if they go to the gym and they go to the airport and they hear on the radio, Trump, duh, Trump, 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 they'll just think, oh, yeah, isn't this guy like always caught up in some scandal? Isn't he like some corrupt politician? Meanwhile, the three of us could go to a coffee shop and spend an afternoon like compiling beyond reasonable doubt evidence that like all of these A-list Democrat politicians, many of the A-list Republican politicians have done things far worse for far longer. But nothing happens because they play ball. They understand how the system works. So baggage doesn't actually matter because anybody who actually goes against the system is going to be perceived by the public to have baggage. So the argument that DeSantis is more electable is actually properly understood an argument against him because what you're actually saying is, well, they're not going to go as hard against him because they're less threatened by him. And it's then it's like, okay, who even cares? What do you guys think about my... I, I think that DeSantis... What I was going to ask is, what do you guys, why do you guys think that DeSantis is running for president now? Because I think it's selfish of him. If you are for, you know, the advancement of American ideals, let's say, whatever whatever name you want to label on the good stuff, put a label on as, I would say, let Trump run in 2024. And whether he, if he wins, great, he's got four years left. And if he loses, you got four more years of, you know, caring for the state you claim to care about. And, you know, making it the the gold standard because people already think that of Florida. They already treat it as the gold standard for a lot of things. And if you have four more, imagine what you could do in four more years in Florida. If people already think you're at the gold standard, you go to platinum, I guess. So I don't understand why he can't just wait another four years when he talks about how great Florida is doing. And he is passing a lot of stuff. But now he wants it's like he wants to prove something. And that's where my suspicion suspicion comes in. Excuse me. When you're doing such great things by most people's accounts in Florida and you haven't been there for very long, uh, what is it, four or five years now, and maybe longer. What I don't remember how, how long it's been. Um, About and four. all of a sudden, yeah, okay. And all of a sudden, you're just like, no, I want more power so soon. That's what, that's what 
gives me a lot of suspicion because unless he thinks that Trump is going to do such a bad job and a job that's way far off what he would do with the country, I don't see why you would just not wait another four years, collect your kudos from, you know, right wing people and some people who claim to be center, which I don't believe in, and just continue to to gain more and more momentum. And by the time you're ready in another four years, Trump is gone no matter what he doesn't have he can't i mean i suppose he could run again but that would he'd have a lot of steam lost if he lost this time otherwise he wins and then he can't run again so i don't know what do you, what do you guys think is the actual you know ostensible reason why he would be running in in like his defense what do you think he would try to claim as to be the reason why he's running for president so soon well, he's, he wants to claim that he can govern better than Trump, and he wants to sort of channel the frustration that people have towards Trump and then use it because he wants to be the next president. I mean, that's just like what it is. Uh, I mean, you look at this guy. I mean, he went to the Ivy League school. He went into the military so his campaign could use the pictures of him in the uniform. He was in JAG, okay? He was, like, doing, like, clerical work. <laughs> it's like nobody actually thinks that's a real thing in terms of, like, wearing the uniform except maybe David French. So totally disingenuous. But, yeah, he's got all the boxes for, you know, the career politician. And it's like, oh, you know, I was a veteran. I went to the Ivy League school. I did my tour of service in D.C. I'm governor. He just wants to be the next president. So he'll claim that he governed better than Trump. And it's like, look, it's, it's apples to oranges. I mean, again, you had significant majorities in both chambers of state Congress. You were able to govern pretty well. You had your media buddies blow it up to make it this big epic thing. If any governor, and again, we don't have a lot of good governors. I mean, I think we have like, what, Rep, 24, 26 governors that are Republican now? Yeah, and probably only like six of them are like DeSantis level. <laughs> Yeah, if, if you put in like six months of solid work with the majorities that these states have, you could be on DeSantis's level in terms of like passing effective legislation. They just don't because they just don't care. So DeSantis, even as a governor, is like the best of a bad situation, which in itself is like not a big enough thing to take the Trump away or take the torch away from Donald Trump. And governing at the, the executive level, you're the president, it's a completely different ball game. Uh, so the idea that like that would translate to, you know, D.C. is laughable, especially because the reason Trump is in D.C. is because he can't be bought. He has no you know ties to these people. If DeSantis wants to be able to take that on, he has to and he has get into bed with all the people who are financing this, all of the people who want to make these connections, who just so happen to be like the worst people in the world who are largely responsible for the destruction of our nation in the first place. So. The idea that he's going to get in there and not be beholden to those interests who installed him in the first place is just like ridiculous. I mean, you do need someone who is an outsider if that's the project that you're trying to take on, which is the whole problem with that argument in the first place. Because when we talk about Trump not you know, doing enough, that sort of understands that when Trump was in office, I mean, he sustained a wonderful economy. He didn't start uniquely any new military conflicts. He cut immigration. He was doing a lot of great stuff. So when people say he didn't get anything done, it's because what we expected of Trump was that he was going to wage war on the establishment. He was going to completely purge the bureaucracy. He was going to drain the swamp. And so when we say, well, Trump didn't get anything done, we need this guy who did get stuff done. The stuff that this guy did get done at the state level was more or less just like keeping the trains running on time, which is what we already acknowledged Trump did as a president. So it's not fair to compare those things because the project of the state governor was never as ambitious as Donald Trump, this literally like larger than life political figure who was going to like install a new reign of American governance in the same way that like a Lincoln or an FDR did. So it's just like ridiculous. Anybody with a knowledge of history would, would think so. Yeah, I mean... I agree with that 100%. I think people need to understand that statewide politics is a lot different than national politics. It's like saying somebody because they, you know, put up good stats in college football, they're going to really, you know, make it in the NFL. They're going to be really good. Doesn't work that way. And it's the same concept. You have like super majorities in the state legislatures. They're really friendly and you pass all these bills and a lot of them are just remedial. Like there was the bill to like stop. They, they called it the don't say gay bill. Um, and basically what it did is you can't talk about like sex until fourth grade or whatever. And it's like, oh, wow, like that's supposed to be game changing. <laughs> Why are they talking about it at all? Like in elementary school, middle school, or even like in high school, we could make Which, that. Which, by argument. the way, that was already like the law of the land. Like when I was in elementary school, we got our sex talk in fourth grade. 
I'm assuming that was per state regulation. Wow. So it just wasn't a law already. But you couldn't talk about the gay stuff. And so they just like made it a lot. It's like, yeah, you can talk about anal sex and genital mutilation, but not until they're at least eight years old. Let me tell you, we're this is where woke goes to die, baby. You want to teach my son about anal sex and cutting his dick off? You're going to have to wait until he's in fourth grade, bucko. You don't like it? Move to California. Like, this is the mentality from these people. We didn't even have that. Point Canada here. I, we, I don't recall a sex talk in school until high school health class. Based. When I did a project on gonorrhea. <laughs> oh yeah, we had to do the uh, yeah the STD projects. I remember that. We had to do drug... board. I had to do a project on like spice and K two. I don't even know what that is. Oh but yeah, I remember the, the drug fake uh, weed. The uh, drug maybe projects in in health class for sure. I got caffeine, so it was kind of a boring one for me. Um, Ours was strictly STDs. <laughs> I think rampant we had to do one running of those rampant. Two. To Drake's problem for uh, showing us in Degrassi. Do you guys know Degrassi? I'm aware of it, yeah. Yeah, like I know it exists. Well, look up the clip. Drake is in a school shooting in Degrassi. Um, that's why he's in a wheelchair for the rest of the series, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Want to ask you guys about hard transition. Want to ask you guys about the Disney stuff with DeSantis. Now, I was a little confused with some people's reactions. I can't give any specific people. Um, reactions to DeSantis, you know, having this war with Disney where they removed this billion dollar campus that they were going to put in Florida. Now, from my point of view, it's kind of like, OK, you hate Disney. They're putting up these corporate jobs in a giant campus. If you think about what a campus is. You can th look to Silicon Valley to see what like a Google you can watch the Google movie with Vince Vaughn or a Facebook campus and stuff. It's very, you know, f um, corporate jobs that's probably where all your social justice warriors are going to work in the company and it was kind of the right wing position to, or the left wing position was oh my god he's he's kicking jobs out of florida and then the right wing position to attack him was sort of the same thing but i'm thinking if you're against disney then don't you want them to not be doing this stuff and wouldn't you kind of want them not in your state at all but then the economics comes into it so where do you guys stand on this whole disney stuff should they have lost their autonomy where it's basically like a board of their own governors running their district would you be for them getting kicked out of the state entirely or just moving it is probably a better better way to put it if they just moved everything to california and overall the battle DeSantis has had with them where do you guys stand on that well, I mean, in terms of the battle that's been ongoing, it's not really something that Ron DeSantis is the clear victor of. And Disney is a woke corporation. They have a very negative impact on the culture. We've seen that in recent years. And I think that attacking them is warranted. However, while DeSantis has been targeting them, it's not like they've gotten any less woke or their influence is waning. And if they do move those jobs to California, they're likely just going to be taken by these woke Californians anyways. So honestly, when it comes down to it, I'm not exactly sure what the end result of it's going to be, but it's not something that DeSantis is really going to be the clear victor of. And if he's going to be running a campaign that is centered on this or, oh, look what he's doing. He's like going out there and picking a fight with Disney. He's not even like winning the fight. And they sent a lot of money to him back in 2018. Even I think for his reelection bid, Disney was uh, giving him millions upon millions of dollars. So if you want to look into that, I think that it kind of shows that all of this, like many other things that Ron DeSantis does, is mainly performative to kind of hoodwink the base into thinking, oh, he's our guy, he's in the headlines, he's doing something. And it, you take that to the national level against Donald Trump, you're going to get attacked from all sides. Doesn't work that way. Yeah, I just looked this up. This is some Newsweek from uh, Zoe Straczewski. Uh, Ron DeSantis took 100 grand from Disney before Don't Say Gay War. And if we are to believe what she says, Disney donated at least 100000 to a political action committee linked to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis before his ongoing public fight with the entertainment company over the state's controversial Don't Say Disney bill. Uh, records of the Florida Department of State Finance database show that Disney Worldwide Inc. made donations from May 2019 to March 2021 for a total of 106809 and change. 
John Doyle, are you taking money from Disney too? Is this uh, something we <laughs> will be finding? I am out not. Uh, no, I am not. Hmm. Well, then, well, what do we say about that? If he if he was in such a an uproar about Disney having some sort of political and governmental autonomy, why did it take him this long? As in, like the this is printed in April. Why did it take him this long to you know get on their ass about this and say? I mean, are we out of bounds to say that he could have been, you know, putting all his ducks in a line or whatever the phrase is and trying to set this up? Or was it just the fact that maybe he was he thought this was a good play? What do you guys think? Rep, what do you think? I mean, it, like I said, it just showcases that a lot of these things that he's doing, it's mainly performative. Why wasn't he rejecting the donor money from Disney when he didn't even need it to win re-election? Why was he, uh, why did he not say anything and his surrogates not say anything about Trump's presidency being so awful until it was clear that Ron DeSantis was going to run for president so they could use that as political ammunition against Donald Trump. That's all this is about. It's about him playing a role. He's like an actor in a way. And they're not ideologically coherent for an obvious reason because they're just using him as a vehicle to get rid of Trump, to rid the GOP of Trumpism. Trump broke a lot of these same people's brains back in the 2016 primary. Right now, it apparently seems as if history in real time tends to be repeating itself. And I think this is just another example to kind of throw in the, in the example list of how DeSantis is acting performatively in order to, you know, get a, you know, more support within the base. And either way, I don't think it's working. And you see that with his poll numbers. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. What do you guys think they do next, this DeSantis camp? I mean, John's out on the front lines of Twitter with uh, Christina Pushaw. Is I'm, no, I'm retiring. I am uh, I'm handing in my, my resignation there. Uh, Why? Well, because it doesn't, it's not productive, which isn't to say it's not a, a worthy job, but there are a lot of people who are putting their reputations on the line right now, getting involved in like the Twitter stuff. And it's a very like high risk, high reward strategy, which is to say there is like a lot of benefit to be gained in terms of like solidifying yourself as like a DeSantis or a Trump A log. Um, but what you risk there is, I think, claims of legitimacy, because I think there are a lot of intelligent people who kind of just get off put by the whole thing. So I jumped in for a while. I had my fun. But everybody knows where I stand. I mean, I've been very consistent on the Trump stuff for my entire career in politics. So I don't know that I'm going to keep up with the dunking on the DeSantis camp just because there are people who are better at it than me and have bigger accounts dedicated to that. So I don't really know if I need to throw my hat in the ring. But uh Look, if they come after GOP Josh, then that's a different <laughs> story. Then we'll invoke like NATO Article 5 and then everyone will come out. But uh, yeah, for, for the time being, I'll probably be done with it, I think. I'm not going to be done with it for a while. I'm I'm staying up. I'm keeping yeah. the I'm keeping up the good fight. We're going to yes. take it. We're going to take it directly to Iowa and wherever uh, if his campaign's even still alive at that point. Yeah. Where else he'll go. Yeah. Um, when I when I'm on Twitter and I see something like that, and I'm wondering if I'm going to weigh in. I just think that it's probably better to make a video about it. Because my best judgment doesn't come through on Twitter. It's usually... The things I end up usually going for are making fun of people about sports. Is is where I allow myself to to break a little bit. But I, I see John's point there of... Uh, you, you know, John can go and uh, battle Dave Rubin face-to-face -face if he'd like. He'd, uh, he can go on a, a blind date with Christina <laughs> Pusha, maybe hash it out there. I wouldn't um, wish that on my worst enemy. That's mean, Rep, okay. Uh -huh. um, well, I, do, I would love to like hear, like, I'm not even saying this to be malicious. I, I'm truly curious. Why do women like do that to themselves? Like, surely they know that it's not going to look good. Like, what is the, the impetus that compels them to get these surgeries? Are they trying to like get a certain look? Is that not I, achieved through makeup already? I mean, there's no way that she actually thinks she looks good. I mean, <sighs> she follows me, by the way, which is going to look bad if she watches this, which she will. Um, I feel the same way about wigs. And I do not understand when you see the big line on the wig 
and it's like purple or something and it's clearly not the person's real hair i'm wondering what they're going for as well it's just like we know you're bald it's all you have to do is just come out and be bald or do something else a lot of the times it's it can't be as bad as what i'm saying as a wig so like you're saying it can't be as bad as like you remember the the trend where they put the vacuum on their lips or something there's just this like weird thing where you know say what you will about the women on the left maybe they don't actually have vaginas or maybe they're like grotesquely <laughs> obese but at least like the women on the right are maybe just as bad in a way because they all have these like they get the like what is it the the fat removed from their cheeks mm. and they get the Botox and the lip injections and they all have this like very like weird plasticky look and the human eye can detect this. You know, when you're looking at it, maybe you still think it's attractive, but you know, when you're looking at it, that something is not right there. Like it, it just looks incorrect. Um, and what? I don't understand that. And, you know, actually largely it's probably because a lot of our, you know, female influencers, they try to make it in LA. They try to make it in Hollywood. They can't quite cut it. They get sad, get plastic surgery, and then some boomers like, "Oh, do you want to be a talking head here? Here's a six figure salary." And they're like, "Okay." Like as a tale is all. You this can't time. prove that. I can. I actually can prove can't. that. How? How? Will I? That's a separate question. But I, I can. I'm gonna be like I Buzz expect Lightyear. Redacted I, you're, you're like fun. Woody. You're like, oh, look at he's gonna prove it, and then it's me flying around Andy's room, and I post all the receipts on screen on, on Twitter. Don't ever like, call me can. Andy. <laughs> you know you can never trust an Andy. Okay, don't call me Andy. You can't trust Andy's. They're is not there trustworthy. Is there lore there? What are the receipts, Andrew? We want to know. Oh wait, your um, name. Okay, never mind. We are. We understand this now. Yeah, okay. It goes Andrew, then Drew. Drews are all right. They're usually very serious. And then Andy's. They can't be trusted. Um, what is with that? The the new thing I'm seeing is the girl who tries to say everything as edgy as possible. Um, Which one? There's so many. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> they keep it's multiplying. The, it's the new trend is say as offensive things as possible. And then they really do get the simps lining up. I'm thinking of one in particular who said, I don't think I can say it, what uh, what she said online, but she, have you seen the one with the litmus, the one who posted about her litmus test for conservatives? No. Okay, well, she said that you can't say, if, if you don't say figs, then you're not a real conservative, if you know what I'm saying. Here. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's I honestly, that, that's, I don't I, know. I if kind I'm, of, I, I kind of, I'm not going to push back on that. that that's that's <laughs> Like, that's closer to being true than it is false. So yeah. I'll say that. All I'm saying is that it seems to be a, the the very popular bit, as Rep said, that's multiplying. What's that? Um, is that the Morgan, that one? No, but that no. that's a number as well. Oh. And then there's there's Isabella Riley, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. And they all seem to, and I, I don't mean any res disrespect to Isabella here because she's the wife of a good friend of mine. Um, and I, I think you would probably share this too, but there seems to be this like content growth strategy where you do say like the most edgy thing possible to get the attention. The reason I don't like that is one, I don't think women should be speaking that way. And two, it's sort of I like- I thought you were gonna stop at speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And it, it sort of like cements this idea that people have that like the utmost virtue to be ascribed to is simply like free speech as defined by like just saying something edgy. and. I, you know, and this is because I'm Gen Z, I have a real problem with like laughing at like terrible things that I should not laugh at. Um, and it's very tough for me to, to kind of like consciously take things seriously because I have this very like reflexive instinct to just like laugh at certain things. But um, I, I do think that our influencers probably shouldn't be promoting that, though I do understand kind of the reason behind it. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably not probably not ideal. Well, I mean, the main You're problem is who's lively, giving them the attention. Uh, more so than the fact that they're saying it in the first place. Because if there was no marketplace for it, then they probably wouldn't be acting that way because it wouldn't be beneficial. I think there's going to be a podcast coming out about that soon. It's going to be the more conservative version of the, uh, what's the dating podcast, whatever, and the other one. Fresh um, and Fit. Fresh and Fit, yeah. There's going oh, to be no. some sort of edgy right-wing girl podcast. Is that That's real? Kind of, I'm they predicting. They uh, kind of already, like, uh, isn't there that one like just pearly things woman or whatever uh, that already kind of does that? But that, uh, but she's got some fairly, sh she's been revealed to have some fairly, uh, like she said, it's okay if a man cheats on his wife, if he's rich, you should expect that sort of thing. So I don't see her being the ultimate edgelord. She just basically tells women to shut up if they're being yeah. too stupid on her show. 
The sad thing is, is too, I've met a couple of these girls and they actually do have like reasonable and interesting things to say insofar as that's a possibility for their kind. Um, and, and it's sad to see that like they feel compelled to like put on this, you know, performance of like, and I'm going to say it this way. It's actually like the same vein almost as what feminists do when they're just like, listen up, men, move out of the way. The future's <laughs> female. It's like that same like boss bitch attitude. But then it's just like in a way that's like kind of back at women. And it's just like, shut up, bitch. Back in the kitchen, bitch. And then the guys are like, so true, queen. But it's like <laughs> that same energy that, you know, you don't really like to see. That reminds me, you were on um, whatever recently. Yes. Now I made it through two hours of that while I was uh, editing, but the the destiny side of the table, man. I was like, I the first hour I was like, John's waiting for his time to pounce, and then the 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 three people on the right just wouldn't shut up, and I I think I super chatted in. I said. Uh, something to the regard of he's a 34 year old bisexual coping on t live video. I did yeah. not know that that was like who destiny was. Like I knew who he was, but I didn't realize he was this bit of, you know, why do you even care? Basically. Yeah. I, uh, and if, if I had a publicist, they would like chew me out for this, but I'm not, <laughs> good, I'm not good at inserting myself into retarded conversation. I, I just won't do it. And it's like, so I'm, and I should have, that's the, I'm acknowledging I should have, you know, I've got this big a, appearance. I should like try to, you know, get in there more, but I just won't do it, you know? And so like if, if Chase, who's a great guy, if he wants to like hold these women's hands and walk them through these very basic ideas, and then mm -hmm. he's getting arrows shot at him the whole time, like, well, what about this? Well, like, what if it's like this? <laughs> he can do that. Godspeed. I, but I just won't. And so when I did have a chance to kind of get in there, I had a pretty good back and forth with Destiny, who really smart guy, seems very genuine. And I'm of the opinion that when we were kind of having our back and forth, I think I had him on the back foot more often than not. He seemed to not address a lot of the stuff I was saying, which maybe was because the nature of the conversation was very democratized. But um, yeah, and, and that's the other thing. You know, people were upset that I didn't like epically dunk on Destiny for his lifestyle more. But the it would have been beyond the scope of the conversation we were having to really get to the root of that because destiny is a guy who is very successful in what he does. He's got a lot of money. He's got a gorgeous wife. Yeah. Their relationship is open. It's really not really a marriage. I told him at the end, his marriage is an abomination, which it is. But in order for me to really like get to the root of that, we're going to have to have a conversation because if I'm telling destiny who in response to him saying, I have a lot of money. I've got properties in some of the best cities in the world. I get to sleep with this like, you know, Nordic model. Uh, and then I also get to hook up with a lot of my fans. I'm supposed to tell this guy, well, that's actually making you miserable if you don't know it. This is like what a lot of the trad guys will say is they'll be like, um, actually you are not happy. And it's like, I'm, I'm sure he's probably experiencing a sense of joy. I'm sure he's not like upset in his day to day. Maybe he is. I don't know. The thing is though, is that lifestyle does ultimately lead towards a sense of emptiness and and it's like a meaningless existence and he even admits to you know he's a hedonist he likes pleasure that is like the utmost pursuit for him so we would have to have gotten into a conversation about like literally the meaning of life why we're here does god exist in order to answer the question of his lifestyle so it wouldn't have been sufficient for me to just sit there and be like your wife is ran through you're like a degenerate bisexual uh, like stuff like that you know that would have been for clips but actually answer the the nature of the discussion would have required a more mature environment i think for it to have taken place so i'll be back on at some point hopefully he will mm -hmm. as well and uh, maybe we can do the the old 1v1 i think that'd be very productive it's been a long time coming i mean i've wanted to see you guys debate for probably years now so real yeah. well i see people on the right of have been afraid to debate him i've seen it personally from person i know literally afraid to debate him because they say oh he's the greatest debater and it kind of reminds me like i watch him and yeah he's a very smart guy you can see the pain in his eyes when his girlfriend says some of the stuff and you can see the pain in her eyes when he says some stuff which is very real my girlfriend even pointed it out uh without really like knowing who they were and it kind of reminds me of that age old something john said before that has always stuck with me to hunter avalon we know and love hunter avalon um that he's stuck in 2016. i mean that's the feeling that i get it's like i've looked up this study it's currently in front of me uh, the context of the study doesn't matter it doesn't matter who published it but i have this raw sentence that i can point out to as fact and therefore i'm right that's the feeling yeah. that i get from some of these people 
And and Destiny was really no different. Yes, he's a smart yeah. guy. He reads he reads a lot of stuff. But when he's giving me these points through the screen, they're still v- feeling very hollow. And like it, it's not convincing. You're 35 year old with blue hair who lets his wife have sex with other people is not convincing me. I'm sorry, dude. It's just not. Yeah. He, uh, and that's the thing with a lot of that format, which I think he maybe even pioneered of like a streamer and he's got his dual monitors and he's looking up the information in real time. It does make for like annoying and unproductive conversation because like literally everything you say is going to be fact check, which, you know, on paper, it's like, it should always be true, but it's like, it's used as a weapon to just circumvent productive dialogue. Um, in person, though, it's a much more productive conversation. I really enjoyed speaking with him because, and I don't say this to be like condescending or conceited, but he's actually like able to understand what you're saying. Whereas a lot of these other lefty guys that you debate, they completely ignore the substance of what you're saying and they try to redirect it or they try to earn actually. And you kind of see that and you think that they're doing it disingenuously as some sort of like tactic. I think now it's literally that they don't know what you're saying. Like they don't understand the point you're trying to make. And so (laughs) they believe that their response is actually hitting it. And you're like, what? This guy's trying to straw man. It's like, no, he literally is too stupid to understand what you're saying. Whereas someone like Destiny actually is intelligent enough to understand the point you're trying to make. And he can kind of look at it and address it for what is it, uh, what it is, which I really do appreciate because that's hard to find. And I'm sure he feels that same way about people on the right, which I would even agree with. But um, yeah, I, I like talking to him a lot. What about the girl who is on there that just refused to answer those questions? Did you see that as a great bit that she stuck to? Or was she literally just, do you think she was really just running from answering that? Because she thought probably it put a her mixture of both. Yeah, I think it was probably, well, actually, I heard some uh, some inside baseball as to maybe the real <laughs> reason why that is. But I don't, I don't know if I can get into it. But um, yeah, I think it was ultimately trying to just like uh, pollute the discussion. Mm. nonsense discussion polluters what do they call that uh time vampire sort of things rep anything else you want to say before we we take off here uh maybe some vince dow bashing something i like mean that. i don't have anything negative to say about vince um great guy and hopefully we'll do a panel wow. with him at some point we will um you can bash but, him uh, well maybe we'll see we'll see what happens but um, no, I mean, we, I think we covered all bases from 2024. DeSantis, he's fake. He's Mitt Romney with a new software update. And uh, <laughs> I think that we need to just unite behind the one candidate we know has our best interests in mind and also can go out there and can win. We'll see what happens. It's still going to be an uphill climb because the GOP is going to try to stab uh, Trump in the back because they're not going to get their way. But uh, he overcame it before. If he gets the good turnout up there, if he could overcome it again, we'll just see. It's the Windows NT, we'll say, if we remember that. Yep. John, what should we call this uh, show if we're going to have another one with Vince? It's a quick name. With uh, with Vince, myself, and, and Rep? Yeah. we got to call it something if there's going to be a part two. Oh, it's got to be like the Maryland reunion or something. <laughs> <laughs> Very esoteric, there, but yeah, no, there's I, there's such a like a, a spot in my brain for that nostalgia. Rep and Vince and me used to go on these like speaking events, and we'd be at some Airbnb in the middle of the sticks, and we'd have like no internet. Uh, had a lot of good times there watching. Yeah. What was that one guy that he really should have been on the whatever show with us? Yeah, he was, should go on. What uh, was his name? Tough Love Dating or whatever. Yeah, we found this like guy on YouTube called Tough Love Dating. He was like some black guy See who was just like recording. This. He was like great content. He's just talking about his experience with women. It's just it was like proto red pill content. Really, it was uh, funny. Good content. Yeah, yeah. great guy. All right. Uh, until next time, uh, you guys keep it uh, keep it sane there, and uh, stop pretending you're not Canadian. Is I guess the the last lesson I have for you guys. Well, is that is that supposed to be funny? Are we supposed to laugh at that? Well, I guess Rep did. So I mean, it's this is like a it's like a forced laughter kind of thing, you know. Hey, I'll stop pretending to be Canadian if you stop pretending to be heterosexual. Okay, dear guy. Wow. That. How about Whoa. that? <laughs> With my Star Wars thing in the background, even still. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice that, but now I'm solidified in, in that position. <laughs> yeah. All right. Whatever, dude. Your screen is backwards. Okay. I'm not going to take that shit from you. That Fair is enough. true. I didn't notice that. Yeah, now, now <laughs> I forgot I'm... to click the mirror button. Did I? Is that a yeah? Is that an option? Yeah. I don't even know. It was for me. Yamak. Okay. Speaking Oops. Polish. All right, take it easy, guys.